G'day and welcome to North Shore Airfield in Tamaki Makaurau here in New Zealand. Uh, we're going to have a look at the engine on Chipmunk WZ865. Uh, just been 15 minutes giving it a bit of a, a long weekend clean. You can see the uh, residue from the degreaser and the oil underneath the aeroplane uh, and I'm sure as we walk around we'll spot another uh, spot or two of oil as we go but that's the nature of the engine uh, the gypsy major aka the dripsy major so let's just walk in a little bit closer the engine is attached to the airframe by these green engine bearers and uh, they're pretty much held on by four bolts so you can see one bolt there another bolt just in there and two corresponding on the other side and they attach the engine through these engine mounts so they've got a rubber shock absorbing block and they bolt onto the crankcase there. The front one's a little bit harder to see. The engine itself giving the uh, overview is what's called an inverted engine and the reason it's called that is because the crankshaft which goes from the back of the engine straight through to the, the propeller is on the top and the cylinders and pistons are on the bottom and you can see down the bottom three of the uh, rocket covers below the uh, the rear three cylinders and pistons just tucked up in front there is uh, is the number one so that's the overall layout of the engine and it is literally inverted because it began life as an upright engine imagine this engine turned over uh, with the pistons on the top created a couple of problems and the main one you can probably imagine if the crankcase and or the crankshaft was in much the same place imagine four pistons on top and imagine what that did to the pilot's view now this particular airplane never had an engine configured like that but its predecessors the uh, Davilin Moth certainly did and they uh, they flipped it over and created the Gypsy Major as we see it today that did create a couple of issues. The airplane taking off in the background, Piper Arrow. The, uh, the main issue it created is what was the sump. So this up here was the sump. Uh, is now no good of course, so the oil from the engine tends to run down to the bottom and uh, does have it have leaking out the bottom. But it meant we also had to create uh, an oil tank. We'll see it better from the other side. But this green thing here with this uh, inlet here is the uh, is the oil tank. So that requires oil pumps and so on to circulate the, the cooled oil back into the engine. So what else do we have on this side? This is kind of the least spectacular side of the engine, but it does have a couple of really important parts. It's got the fuel pumps. So there's two engine driven fuel pumps, uh, fuel coming in the uh, pipe on the right from the, the fuel bowl down the bottom there up through one fuel pump, another fuel pump, and then uh, off through this outlet back to the engine. It's also how we prime the engine. So the carburetor, which we'll have a look at, is on the other side. And to prime it, we have a little priming handle which moves the diaphragm on the rearmost fuel pump up and down and uh, puts fuel through, the, uh, through the, the main fuel pipe. Into the, uh, into the inlet manifold on the other side so we can get some priming gas. Other miscellaneous things here, we won't dwell on the ones that are duplicated, but uh, at the top, we've got the vacuum pump. There it is there. So it basically sucks air through the uh, gyroscopically driven instruments, the artificial horizon, the turn and slip, uh, and the gyro compass to give them the spin that they need to operate. Down below here, is the uh, the reservoir for the hydraulic system. The hydraulic system in this case is just the brakes, left and right. And this black box here is a uh, suppressor for the um, electrical system to stop uh, interference with the, with the radio. So let's walk around to the other side of the aircraft. So the Gypsy Major in this installation is a direct drive engine, which means that the propeller bolts directly onto the front of the engine, onto the, uh, onto the crankshaft through a splined shaft, which means a, a 
a shaft with a whole lot of grooves into it, which uh, corresponds to a whole lot of grooves in the fitting that the propeller goes on to. The propeller itself is a fixed pitch propeller, which means that the angle that uh, it's set at now is the angle it's set at throughout the flight. Uh, it can't be adjusted, unlike uh, many more modern aeroplanes. So let's have a look at this side of the engine, a bit more happening here. So we'll look from uh, from front to back, you can see the engine bearer is exactly the same as I said. Uh, down here, this, uh, this round circle facing you is the inlet for the carburetor. When the, uh, when the cowling is down, there's a lovely scoop. There it is up there which directs air straight into the carburetor. So the carburetor takes uh, a feed of fuel. So we had that fuel line from the other side, from the fuel pumps, takes it in, mixes it with the air, and directs it into here. So this box here, kind of an upside down T with a very broad um, horizontal member, is the inlet manifold. And that delivers a mixture of fuel and air to each of the four cylinders, which we can see a little bit better on the side. We'll talk about them in a moment. So you can see here's the number four um, cylinders inlet, carrying it in through there into the, uh, into the cylinder. So let's look at the cylinders in a little bit more detail. So one, two, three, four, again, we can't see the front one very well, but what we can see, when we look at the, uh, the number two here, is it's got fins on it. So both on the cylinder and on the head, it's got these uh, horizontal fins, and the idea of those is to remove heat from the uh, from the engine. So it's an air-cooled engine with a little bit of help from the oil and fuel that goes around it, like any other engine. But air comes in the front; it's directed through baffles and uh, out the other end, taking away with a lot of the heat energy. So those are the cylinders. The ignition system, like on almost every aeroplane, is duplicated. So we have what are called magnetos. A magneto is nothing more than a very high voltage uh, generator, and that's kind of the visible end of the magneto there. And it distributes the spark between the four sets of, uh, well, between the four um, cylinders by their ignition leads and spark plugs through a distributor. So underneath this metal cap here, there's a spinning arm that is geared to the engine and it says you get a spark, you get a spark, you get a spark, you get a spark. Everyone takes their turn. And the spark is distributed, so there's actually four wires coming out of here through the uh, ignition harness and then each one, or each uh, cylinder has a, a lead going to it and that leads into the spark plug. So that there is the beginning of the spark plug. And as I said, everything on uh, most aeroplanes is duplicated. So we saw we had two fuel pumps. On the other side, we've got another magneto leading its, um, feeding its own set of, uh, of spark plugs. Other things around the back, um, similar engine to the Tiger Moth. And the big difference is uh, the number of accessories that are added to this engine. So going from the top, we've got the, uh, the generator. The generator uh, makes a bit of heat when it's doing its work, so it has a cooling inlet with the air that runs through the, uh, the assembly to keep it cool. Coming down, a little bit tricky to see, you've got the starter, and just so it can fit, the starter is actually at a 90 degree angle to the, uh, to the back of the engine where it uh, goes in by, by a geared drive and a clutch to start the engine. Further down, We've got the one of the uh, oil filters. There we go. That's the uh, that's the high pressure oil filter. And on the other side uh, is the suction filter, which we didn't really have a good look at. And scattered around the engine are other sort of coarse screen filters. There's one up the front here uh, on the scavenge pump. So if you were to take this cover off, you'd find a little mesh filter designed to stop um, any metal particles making their way back through this oil return line here back into the engine. Speaking of oil, now this is very hard to see but we'll give it a go. Right, see those three pipes leading up there? That's the bottom of the oil pump assembly. So the oil pump assembly is three oil pumps in one on a common drive. There's really no better view of it than that. 
these uh, airplanes are challenging to get to and work on and uh, undo and tighten bolts. So there's three um, oil pumps in one. Two of them are the scavenge pumps which uh, pull oil from the crankcase back into the uh, back into the pump assembly and then back into the uh, back into the tank. The other one is the pressure pump which feeds pressurized oil up into the pressure filter that we talked about through the pressure filter outlet. See that brass thing there? There it is. And up and across through this pipe here into the main oil gallery. So what looks like kind of a hidden pipe along the top of the uh, engine cover is exactly that. That's, uh, that's State Highway 1 for oil making its way into the engine. And that, more or less, oh, we didn't have a good look at the uh, my brightly polished uh, oil tanks. This is the other side of the uh, of the oil tank. So on the other side, it's got a scoop uh, to to take air through this radiator assembly, and it shoots out through the side we're looking at uh, to, to provide some cooling to the oil. So the oil that goes back into the engine is cooler than the air that comes out, and the, the oil that comes out is one of the ways that the uh, the engine is cool. Remember, the other way is uh, through those fins on the cylinders, and the third way is through the uh, through the fuel itself going in and, and, and cooling the uh, the inside of each cylinder on each charge. So this is where we fill up with oil, and the oil cap also serves as a dipstick. And it's got a little half full indication on it. Right there. Oh, there's the instructions on how much oil to put inside uh, and how much air remains in the tank as well if that's uh, of any practical use to you. I don't really think it is. So that's the Gypsy Major 10 Mark II as fitted to the de Havilland Chipmunk and we'll finish on the maker's plate. It needs a bit of a polish but uh, we'll just set it in there. There we go. Thank you for watching. Please uh, add any questions you have in the uh, in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Some I might have to look up. See ya.